This will be episode number two for the biblical hunt for a virtuous woman. And we've made it to a very interesting character. The Bible doesn't say a lot about Noah's wife. But she is a very, very significant character. Because just like Eve, just like Eve's situation, Miss Noah is a woman that everybody came from. You know, everybody can trace themselves all the way back to Eve. Everybody could trace themselves all the way back to Miss Noah. And her sons are the ones who populated the world over again. That's how you know you can trace yourself all the way back to her. And it doesn't say her name. It doesn't say anything about her personality. Or even if she was supportive to Noah. So I'm going to assume things... I'm going to assume some things and assume she was a godly woman. As, as far as we can see, it looks like she was a godly woman. And let's see what characteristics we can get from her. But look at Genesis 6 and verse 8. It says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So Noah found grace. Well, maybe Noah's wife's name was Grace. Well, some people call her Joan as a joke. And you'll get that later if you don't. But no, really, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Out of everyone on the planet, he found grace. But he also found a virtuous woman. And obviously, Miss Noah uh, didn't try to make herself a name. No wonder her name's not in there. She didn't try to make herself a name. Uh, like her grandchildren, they ended up doing the opposite in Genesis 11. When they tried to make the Tower of Babel, they tried to make themselves a name. You know, she taught Nimrod better than that, I'm sure, but that goes to show you it's not always your parenting that's the problem. Kids are going to be kids. They're going to do what they do. You know, they've got a free will. You know, don't listen to people when they say if a kid is bad, it's the mom's fault. They should tell that to the Lord who whooped Israel's tail so many times, yet they revolted more and more in Isaiah 1. Does that mean God is a bad father? No, that doesn't make God a bad father any more than the uh, Miss Noah's grandkids at the Tower of Babel acting up makes her a bad mother or a bad grandmother. So don't listen to people when they think they know everything and want to place all the blame on you, on your, on how you be a mother because of how they look at your kid. You know, a kid has free will. Just because you raise him up, train him up in the way he should go, that means he's going to go the way he should go. But we don't know her name. We'll just call her Miss Noah. We know she's a godly woman with a good name, which is priceless. A good name is priceless, just like a virtuous woman. Ecclesiastes 7 1 says, A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. Proverbs 22, 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Genesis 6, 9. Back to Genesis. We've seen that Miss Noah, so far we don't know her name, but we know she's got a good name. And she chose a good man with a good name. In Genesis 6, 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. It seems Mr. and Mrs. Noah were the last ones left with a conscience under the dispensation of conscience. It seems they're the last ones left. So you know what that shows us? That Mrs. Noah knew how to pick them. You see, around here, people sarcastically say she really knows how to pick them. Because, you see, most women get bums for boyfriends and husbands. And they sarcastically say, man, she really knows how to pick them. But uh, Miss Noah really did know how. You see, every woman would do good to be in search of a just man like Noah was. You see, don't settle for an ungodly man thinking you can change him. It just so happens she picked the very man that God picked to start the world over and bring in a new dispensation with. You say, you say, well, 
Finding a godly husband, that is a hard task because there aren't any good men left. Well, Miss Noah found Noah, and he was the last good man on the planet. You say there had to have been more than that. Well, no, if there was, if there was more good men than Noah, then why didn't they get on the ark? Why didn't they help him build the ark? That's how you know the sons of God in Genesis 6 weren't saved men because they would have got a ticket on Noah's boat. And Peter calls the world of Noah's day the world of the ungodly in 2 Peter 2, 5. So Miss Noah knew how to pick them. She found the best man of them all. And that's what you need to do. You need to go find a good man. It'll be a lot harder for you to continue being a virtuous woman if you don't find a good man. So Miss Noah could have chose to date one of those sons of God back there who were corrupting the gene pool. You know, she could have been friends with benefits with those giants in the earth in those days of Genesis 6. But she chose Noah, a man perfect in his generations. She chose the one that hadn't been corrupted by Satan's attack on the seed. You see, she didn't care about those mighty men which were of old men of renown. Back there in Genesis 6, she wanted the godly man. I mean, you wouldn't see her posting pictures of those big muscular giants on, face, on her Facebook wall with little googly eye emojis and heart emojis next to it. She had a 600-year-old Noah building the ark and holding a street preaching sign that probably said something to, like, don't miss the boat and, you know, have enough sense to get in out of the rain. That's what she cared about was a, a godly man, not a big muscle man, not one of those giants. She had a godly man. That's what a virtuous woman wants. Because that helps her be a virtuous woman that she needs to be. So this is key because if a man loves God and loves the word of God and wants to do what it says, then you know what? He will also treat his wife right. Because the Bible is about treating your wife right. Colossians 3.19 Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Ephesians 5.25 Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So... Miss Noah, she knew how to pick them. She chose the best man for the job of being her husband. Miss Noah was a good mother. In Genesis 6.10, it says, And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Without Miss Noah, there would be no Shem, Ham, and Japheth. How do we know she was a good mother? Well, Shem, Ham, and Japheth probably wouldn't have gotten on the ark if she wasn't a good mother. They would have love the world and the things that were in the world. They would have been conformed to the world and stayed out there in the world and died in the flood. But they got on the ark. And we know that Ham messed up later. But it seems he started out good. But the best thing to do is raise your kids up to follow the Lord. Believe the Lord is always right in everything. Never casting doubt on the word of God. And Miss Noah didn't... Um, have a, a tear-stained, worn-out, marked-up King James Bible because there wasn't a Bible yet. But she had the Word of God that came through Noah. And it doesn't seem that she cast a doubt on the Word of God at all, especially not in front of the boys, Him, Shem, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. doesn't seem she ever cast a doubt on the Word of God. Never cast doubt on the Word of God in front of your kids. You know, you want to be like Timothy's mother and grandmother. And how they taught him right. In Second Timothy 1 Timothy 1.5 it says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So Paul told Timothy, he's got this unfeigned faith, this faith that's not pretended, it's not fake, and you got that from your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And in 2 Timothy 3.15, it says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise in a salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So it seems Timothy had a good grandmother, Lois, and a good mother, Eunice. And from a child, they taught him the holy scriptures. So Miss Noah, probably the Shem, him, and Japheth's whole life, she was teaching them that word of God that was given to Noah. Not casting doubt on it. Not making them think that Noah was crazy like everybody else thought. 
So Miss Noah, she was a, a good mother. She knew how to pick the right husband. And Miss Noah stayed right in a very corrupt world. And that's hard to do. And that's what you're in right now, a very corrupt world. It's hard to stay a virtuous woman in such a corrupt world you're living in. It says in Genesis 6, 11 through 12, it says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. It was a sick world they were living in. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. But Miss Noah did not conform. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. John 15, 19, If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world, but have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. I'd say that they hated Noah, and I'd say that they hated Miss Noah and his sons. And they were probably glad they were getting on this boat until the flood came. But it says in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I mean, she did not love the world. She loved God. She loved her husband. She loved the things of God. You could say that Miss Noah wasn't going to Noah's Day's equivalent of a Taylor Swift concert. You could say that she wasn't driving around the road with their sons in the car seats listening to Cardi B and Nicki Minaj and Ice Spice and Drake and Lil Wayne and Eminem and whoever the big time singer is now. She was not conformed to the world. And she was training her child up in the way he should go so that when he was old, he would not depart from it. So you see, she stayed right in a corrupt world. She would have had all this temptation around. Most likely there was tons of ungodly music to fill her mind with slush and anything that's the opposite of a virtuous woman's personality being thrown her way back then, just like it is now. But she was staying right in a corrupt world. And Miss Noah didn't hold her husband back. That's the next thing. She didn't hold him back. You see, Noah always walked with God. He stayed prayed up. He read whatever word of God was passed down to him. He heard from the Lord just like you hear from a friend. And one day he's walking along and probably talking to the Lord about how wicked things have become. And the Lord says in Genesis 6, 14, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window thou shalt make to the ark. And in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. So Noah... He gets this command from the Lord, right, to build the ark. And I can't imagine having to come home and break the news to Miss Noah about this new teaching the Lord has given him. You know, build a boat, get in it, or die. And I, I imagine he might have smoothed it over and said something like, you know, honey, you remember that cruise you always been wanting to go on, that cruise you're always talking about? And then kind of broke the news to her that way. Uh, he probably smoothed it over real good. He probably said, you know, the Lord is going to supply all our need. And he's already got the tickets for me. You and the kids are already paid for. And if we can get any friends to get on the ark, they're free. Which bring a friend day. Get as many people as you can get. They're all free if you can just bring a friend. Because, you know, the ark is a type of Christ. And you can come in freely. You just have to come of your own free will. But Miss Noah might have said, are you sure about this? I know would have said, oh yeah, me and the Lord, we got this agreement. He told me, he said in, in Genesis six eighteen, but with thee will I establish my covenant and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. So Miss Noah could have said, you know, she needs to, you know, hang back with her mother. She's, she's sick and her mother really needs her or her sister really needs her. She's got to hang back with her or her, you know, her BFF. She's got to hang back with her or that she isn't ready for that type of commitment. Or she could have left Noah entirely and got with one of them 
giants are sons of God roaming around. But it seems she went right along with Noah and didn't stop him from doing what he felt like the Lord needed him to do, no matter what she would have to leave behind. And not even when he broke the news to her about the animals. You know, it didn't just stop with the ark. It went on with the animals. In Genesis 6, 19, Noah said, you know, he, and he also said, Of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. So, he, I mean, he had to bring snakes and snails and dogs and cats and Komodo dragons and uh, two or seven of every living animal was coming on the ark. And she could have pitched a fit, but it seems she didn't. And I bet uh, Miss Noah probably worked with him on the ark. You know, she was a virtuous woman. And you know what it says about a virtuous woman in Proverbs thirty-one thirteen? It says, she seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. You know, she was a worker. In Proverbs thirty-one twenty-seven, speaking of the virtuous woman, it says, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. You know, she doesn't just sit around idle committing the sin of Sodom. You know, Ezekiel said the sin of Sodom was pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. You know, she was a worker. Working keeps you out of trouble. Paul talks about those in 2 Thessalonians 3, 11 who work not at all, but are uh, busybodies. You know, don't think that a virtuous woman uh, just can't do anything but just sit around the house all day. That's not w what's going on. A virtuous woman works harder than most people. I guarantee you a, a virtuous woman would work harder than most men that I work with on the job because she's constantly working with her hands. Uh, the men at work usually just work with their hands on their iPhone. But just because you're a woman doesn't mean you can't work with your hands. And while Noah was working probably 16-hour shifts or something like that on that ark, he didn't have to worry about Mrs. Noah sleeping around with one of those mighty men which were of old men of renown out there behind his back. Uh, she was a virtuous woman. It's more than you could say for Eve, you know. Adam left just for a minute and she was flirting it up with the serpent. But it says about the virtuous woman in Proverbs 31, 11, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. His heart safely trusts in her. He could have trusted in Miss Noah. There was no fear of, of her betraying him or anything like that. Well, he was out doing what he needed to do to please God. You know, it's hard to do what you need to do to please God it can be very hard to be somebody uh, that God really wants something to do and you got all this pressure from the world and you got all the pressure from all the duties of life and then you maybe you have a wife that makes it really hard on you to complete anything. And if you have never experienced that, take it easy on people that have experienced that or are going through that because if you were in their shoes... You may be just sitting at home, never even going to church or even opening your Bible. It may discourage you that much and make you that bitter towards God and the things of God in the Bible. So you should really thank God if you have a virtuous woman as a wife that really supports you and the things you want to do for God and the good things that you want to do. And... It says about Noah, Genesis 6, 22, Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So if you have a husband that walks with God and wants to do something for God, you should be thankful and never hold him back. Because you know how many women there are out there who would love to have a man that just wanted to do right, wanted to live right, wanted to treat her right, wanted to raise the kids right, didn't have to say the F word in front of them, didn't have to say GD in front of them. Didn't uh, have to just go around watching filthy stuff in front of them, listening to filthy music in front of them. Still listening to the same stuff he listened to as a teenager. Playing the same video games he played as a teenager. But he's actually a man. Put away childish things. Gets up, goes to work, reads the Bible, tries to live right. You know how many women would love to have that? But yet they've got a 30-something-year-old 
a 30 year old something man's body a 15 year old brain and they're trying to raise a family with him you know if you got a man that's trying to live right trying to do something for god you should be happy and not hold him back if you have a husband that walks with god be thankful if you have a wife that walks with god be thankful there are a lot of women married to just bums who won't work won't help around the house won't help with the kids won't show any type of love or affection so the best thing to do if you have a good husband is support him and what he wants to do for god and the other way around so miss noah didn't hold noah back miss noah was faithful to her husband it says of the virtuous woman in proverbs that she does her husband good. Proverbs 31, 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Now, obviously, it's easier to do good to some husbands than to other husbands. You know, Romans twelve eighteen it says, If it be possible, as much as lieth within you, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And that's not necessarily talking about husbands there, but uh, you could apply that to husbands too. Sometimes it's almost not possible to live peaceable with a lot of husbands because they're so dumb but most likely going on 600 years of marriage now miss noah had stayed with noah and hadn't gotten bored of him yet in genesis 7 6 and 7 it says and noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth and noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood so noah had been working on that ark around 120 years probably sacrificed time with miss noah to work on it date times and uh you know date nights they could have been doing stuff got sacrificed to try to get people to get on with him but she stayed right with him through blood sweat and tears and in genesis 7 7 it says and noah went in and his sons and his wife and his sons wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood you know how i know miss noah was a good woman because her daughter-in-laws made it off the ark if that was some of y'all on there with your daughter-in-laws for that long there wouldn't have been any way for shem him and japheth to be fruitful and multiply when they got off the ark you would have done killed their wives in that ark and Miss Noah didn't even think about killing her daughter-in-laws. Even though she could have got away with it scot-free because capital punishment wasn't instituted until Genesis 9 under the Noahic Covenant. And many times women have really have a really hard time getting along with women, especially women who are married to their sons. And the best thing you can do is not interfere in their marriage and do your best to make their marriage as easy as possible. It isn't your job to tell them what to do. It's not your job to tell them how to raise their kids. You don't have parental authority over your son once he's married and a grown man. You know, why do you think it says in Mark 10, 7, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And sometimes when your daughters get married, you hate your son-in-law so bad that you do everything you can to make their marriage even more miserable than it might already be. This is the opposite of how a godly woman is supposed to act. Titus 2.4 says that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. You see, as a godly mother, you should encourage your son to love his wife and be not bitter against her and teach the daughter to love her husband. You see, so many times I hear the mother put down and criticize or even suggest her daughter should leave the husband. Not even carrying the kids would grow up in a you know a busted up home. In Genesis seven eleven through twelve, it says in the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventeenth day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. You see, Noah and his wife and his sons and his sons' wives, they were on that ark a long time together. And they they all made it off. They didn't kill each other. That shows, you know, Miss Noah was a virtuous woman. She didn't kill her daughters-in-law. If that would have been a lot of y'all, y'all probably would have. And she went through all that suffering, you know, around 120 years, Noah building on the ark, missing out on time with him probably. She probably thought they were close to kicking the bucket. I mean, they was already 600-something years old. But then... You know, they eventually make it off the ark. 
And now, Miss Noah is married to the king of the world. They're the only family on the earth. Noah, as the head of the house, is the king of the earth. In Genesis 9, 1 through 2, it says, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the field and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea and to your hand are they delivered. Noah did what God said and on the post-flood planet, he's, he's the new king of the kingdom of heaven. You see, if your husband is doing what God says and trying to live for God, in the millennium, he will be a king, and you took part in that, and you'll be a king. Just from doing what God said and supporting him and doing what God said. You know, God said, 2 Timothy 2.12, if we suffer, we, saw, we shall also reign with him, you know, the Lord. If we deny him, he also will deny us, talking about our reign with him. You know, if you do what you're supposed to do, you're going to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium. And as a virtuous woman, you do what you're supposed to do as a godly wife, a godly mother. You're going to reign with the Lord. You may be suffering now. Things may be hard now. But if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. 